Good morning, church. Today is uh, Sunday, September the 20th. I had the wrong date on here. Got a few announcements before we start. Uh, we've got a board meeting next Sunday following service. And just a reminder that the process of coming in um, we don't uh, hand out or go along with the offering plate. We don't hand out the uh, communion elements. All of that will be in place at the back of the church. As you come in, the, uh, there is a mailbox on the wall just inside the sanctuary door that the offering can go in. Um, I've got to do up a sign and put on that. need to remember that for tomorrow. And when it's Communion Sunday, which is the first Sunday of each month, it'll be on the table at the back, and it'll be in little packets that you pick up. We ask that you wear a face mask until you are seated and settled. And um, you can take it off at that point if you're not going to be up and about. And when you do get up, we ask that you put it back on. And as mentioned last week, we have the breathable inserts that. Um, they go inside regular face masks. There's some at the back still. Um, take one if you can use it. And there was something else I wanted to mention too, but I... Do you remember what it was? No, I don't remember either. Oh, well. Uh, it may come to me. Then again, it may not. Um, we're going to start off with prayer. We need to remember the Honeyford family. Danny still isn't feeling well. And um, Stephanie has still got that jaw issue, and it's really uh, beginning to bother her. Uh, Hank's niece, Tammy, uh, she's had a stroke. And as far as I know, she's still in the hospital. They haven't made it back from their due yesterday in Niagara Falls or down that way. And we ask that you pray for Bobby for continued healing on her foot. She had surgery on it two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And uh, we ask for a prayer for Sheila. We had the celebration of life for her uh, beloved partner yesterday, Jim. He had uh, passed away on the 26th uh, in his sleep. So she needs God's strength to carry her through. And my cousin Sybil, she had uh, tear duct repair surgery on both eyes. Um, looks a little nasty, but she says there's no pain to it. So if we can just uh, remember those uh, prayer requests. Um, and I know God has heard them. And he hears the uh, prayers that are in our hearts that we don't speak as well. So let's bow our heads and focus on the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're so thankful that you know the cries of our heart. We thank you, Lord, that you sit on the throne, that you are the God who created all things. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We ask, Lord, that you be with each and every one of us, whether you're uh, sitting here in the pew or whether you're sitting at home watching this. We ask that you bless each one that hears your message. Be with us all, Lord. We lift up Stephanie and Danny and Zoe and Noah and ask that you touch them in a special way. Give them peace about the schooling remotely as well, Lord, because that also causes a great deal of stress aside from the health issues. And Lord, there's so many that have concerns over this COVID-19, and now that it's rearing its ugly head again, even stronger across Ontario, that it's uh, causing a lot of people to be worried about it. It's causing people to be angry about the uh, repercussions of, uh, of actions that we all need to remember to do our social distancing, to not be partying, uh, not to be having great big uh, gatherings. So we need you, you to be in control, Lord. 
Give us discernment. Help us to know exactly what it is to do, we're supposed to do. And help us to follow through on that, Lord, without uh, getting angry with everybody about it. We lift Tammy up to you, Lord, and we ask that you touch her and that you heal her. We thank you, Lord, for the doctors who are looking after her, and we ask that you open their eyes so they can see what needs to be done. She's a young lady in her 30s, and she has a lot of life ahead of her. We pray, Lord, that she knows you, and if she doesn't know you yet, we ask that your message gets to her so that she can receive it. And, Lord, we lift up Bobby Lynn to you and ask that you heal her. Heal that toe, Lord. It's a concern when it keeps weeping. But we know that uh, that's all part of the healing process. That's what the doctor said. And her stomach issues, Lord, whether it's an ulcer or it's uh, the liver counts again, we ask that that's uh, kept under control and that that's healed as well. And we lift Sybil up to you, Lord, and ask that you heal those eyes. She had both eyes done at the same time, so we ask that that's healed and her vision improves drastically. And Lord, I ask that you just be with each of us, and if there's problems physically or mentally, we ask that you uh, touch each of us and, and heal us too and strengthen us. And Lord, this throat of mine, I don't know if it's asthma coming back in or if it's all allergies, but I ask that uh, you take hold of that too. And the people in at the retirement villas, they're, they're getting extremely uh, down. I ask that you be with them. They've been able to see their families, but very rarely. And the ones that uh, don't have families that are able to come in, Lord, it makes it very difficult. And it's so hard when some people that they've seen every day are taken out in ambulance and then they don't come back because they pass away. We're thankful, Lord, that one lady that uh, was at the manor, that she knew you, and she knew you well, so we know that she's with you. And we thank you for knowing her. It was a, a pleasure for all of us to know her and to hear her playing the organ and the piano because she had amazing talent. Lord, I ask that you be with us today as the message is presented, and I Pray, Lord, that it's understandable. Let your will be done in this place, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've got one fly that keeps flying around here. I'm going to uh, send him to the great beyond, too. We need to remember our faith communities, too, because everybody's trying to get things opened up. And uh, it's hard because people are, are afraid to be out mingling with uh, other people. The restrictions haven't been pulled back on uh, churches or funerals or things like that, uh, but that doesn't say they won't be. So we need to uh, watch what we do. We're going to sing Blessed Assurance, so uh, I'll go put that on because Sam's not here today. Oh, good. Thank you. 
This is my story, this is my song. And it should be everybody's story. And it should be what we proclaim at all times, that Jesus is a source of life. We're gonna sing Revive Us Again.
It is the Lord that revives us all the time. And next we're going to sing Rock of Ages. And then we're going to uh, get into the message. Rock of Ages. I think I need to take another Ricola before I start the message. Throat gets a little parched. Okay, last week we did the first half of Revelation 19, and that was when heaven was shouting praises to God. That covered verses 1 to 10. This week we'll finish off Revelation 19, but I'm going to read the whole chapter again anyway so that you can be refreshed on uh, what the first part was all about. Starting at verse 1, it says, After this I heard what sounded like a vast crowd in heaven shouting, Praise the Lord! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. His judgments are true and just. He has punished the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality. He has avenged the murder of his servants. And again, the voices rang out, Praise the Lord! The smoke from that city ascends forever and ever. Then the 24 elders and the four living beings fell down and worshipped God, 
who were sitting on the throne, and they cried out, Amen, praise the Lord. And from the throne came a voice that said, Praise our God, all his servants, all who fear him, from the least to the greatest. Then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd, or the roar of mighty ocean waves, or the crash of loud thunder. Praise the Lord, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to him, for the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear, for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who, invite, who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, These are true words that come from God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said, No, don't worship me. I am the servant of God just like you and your brothers and sisters who testify about their faith in Jesus. Worship only God, for the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. That's the first part of Revelation 19, and as you can see, the celebration going on in heaven. And all the angels and all of the saints are celebrating because Jesus is victorious. Now the next part, it's, uh, it's about triumph, but it's a little bit different. It opens up with a heading, says the rider on the white horse. So starting at verse 11, it says, Then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was standing there. Now, do you remember back in uh, chapter 4? John had seen uh, a glimpse of heaven, and he saw the door to heaven open up so he could see just a little bit inside. Well, now heaven is opened. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven, <coughs> pardon me. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe, at his thigh, was written this title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures flying high in the sky, Come, gather together for the great banquet God has prepared. Come and eat the flesh of the kings, generals, and strong warriors, of horses and their riders, and of all humanity, both free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beasts and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. And the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast. Miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding the white horse. And the vultures all gorged themselves on the dead bodies. Well, that's the full chapter of Revelation 19. The visions... <laughs> Pardon me. The visions that John has been recording up to this point in the last half of Revelation 19 has been leading up to the second coming of Jesus Christ when he comes in power and glory to avenge the persecution of his prophets and his church. Verse 11 says, Then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. He is faithful and true, that's Jesus. He doesn't forget the promises that he has made. And Jesus is on the white horse, a sign of power and victory. And we look back to Zechariah, who in chapter 14 records his vision. And that was many years prior 
And starting at verse 3, it says, Then the Lord will go to war against those nations. He will fight as in a day of battle. On that day, he will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives will split in two, forming a deep valley that runs east and west. Half the mountain will move toward the north, and half will move toward the south. Then the Lord my God will come, and all the holy ones with him. Now Zechariah saw Jesus coming to the Mount of Olives first. That's Jerusalem to his chosen people. Isaiah also had a vision. And it's recorded in Isaiah 64. It says, tear open the skies and come down to earth so that the mountains will tremble before you. Like a fire that burns twigs. Like a fire that makes water boil. Let your enemies know who you are. Then all nations will shake with fear when they see you. Jesus is coming in power and in glory. And since that first sin committed in the Garden of Eden, God has revealed his will to all people, wanting them to follow him and to be obedient to his commands. Ultimately, he gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, which were given to the people, to not only memorize and learn them, but more importantly, to obey them. God demands obedience, or we're doomed to judgment and punishment for our sins. Now, Jesus took the punishment for our sins so that we wouldn't have to. But those who refuse to accept Jesus will indeed suffer the judgment of God. Does that sound harsh? Well, it is. But it's the reality of life, and it can't be sugar-coated, and you can't make light of it. John has also told us through the book of Revelation that Christ's bride, the church, continues to bear witness of the gospel of Jesus right to the end. Christ is what people need to hear. Christ is who they need to believe in. But it's scripture like the book of Revelations that forces us to face what lies ahead for anyone who has not received the message or has not accepted it. But this shouldn't leave us without hope or confidence because God is mercy. He wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. And we're told that in 1 Timothy 2.4. Verse 12 of Revelation 19 says, His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understands except himself. Jesus knows our every thought. He sees our heart and knows our motives for everything. Jesus did not, does not judge by outward appearance like people do. His authority to rule has no limits, as noted by the many crowns. As you were told previously, the beast had a limited number of crowns in his effort to be a copy or a counterfeit of Christ. Jesus is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and there's none like him. Jesus' name is written on his crowns, and he's the only one who can understand that name. Verse 13 says, He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. John has already told us that the Lamb is worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because he was slain and with his blood he purchased men for God from every tribe, every language, all peoples, and all nations. So the blood on the robe could be his that he had given for our salvation. But since this is the judgment portion of, of uh, Revelation, more than likely it's the blood of the rebellious who fight Jesus and hold allegiance with the beast. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. That's uh, verse 14. The Son of God leads the angels and the saints, the people of God. And they're not armed with regular weaponry, but they're clothed in righteousness, in fine white linen. And they were riding white horses as well. Verse 15. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. The word of God is powerful and it is just. God's just judgment is severe, but it is just. Verse 16. On his robe 
at his thigh is written this title, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Jesus has all authority. No other monarch or leader has authority. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in all the earth, heaven and earth. Verse 17, then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures, flying high in the sky, come, gather together for the great banquet God has prepared. Come and eat the flesh of the kings, generals, and strong warriors. Eat the flesh of their horses and their riders, and of all humanity, both free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world, and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. And the beast was captured. And with him the false prophet who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast. Miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding the white horse. And the vultures all gorged themselves on the dead bodies. Now verses 17 to 21, which is what I just read. Show a rather gruesome end to those who rejected the authority of God. But those verses also show that earthly standards have no bearing on the judgment of God. It's the same for the ones who deem themselves to be above everyone else, right down to those who can, are considered to be the lowest of society. God's divine judgment is just. It is fair. Perhaps you can understand why I chose to separate the messages of uh, Revelation 19. The first 10 verses, John has told us of the great blessing of being invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's when the church is joined with Jesus. That great feast that the prophets had described is including the best of the meat and the finest of wines. We're not invited to be wedding guests. We're invited to be Christ's own bride. The church is the bride of Christ. Well, when we moved into the second part of the chapter, and there's another feast yet to come, this one is a feast of judgment. This feast is also by invitation, and Jesus invited all the birds of prey and everyone who rejected Jesus, saving grace. They won't be just guests either. Actually, they'll be the main course. Nothing more than food for the vultures. And next, we went into the last battle. At this point, all those who worship the dragon suffer the full consequences of their actions. The beast is waging war in the church, and suddenly Christ appears. And the beast is caught and thrown into the lake of fire to be tormented forever. And the false prophet will suffer the same fight, fate. Jesus Christ is victorious, and his church, his bride, is vindicated. Those who had been sealed with his protection. But everyone who took the mark of the beast will suffer the full wrath of God. There's victory in Jesus, and we can all sing hallelujah. Now, next week, we're going to look at Revelation 20 and the 1,000 years. Now, at this point, we're going to uh, sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
And now we'll sing, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. It's also called the doxology. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, Lord, and we thank you for your message. Revelation is a difficult book to try to uh, teach. It's uh, very picturesque, and it's, it's a tough one. And some people don't like to hear it. Well, most people don't like to hear it. But it's something that we need to know. It's something that we need to hear and recognize. It shows the importance of knowing who Jesus is and accepting him into our lives. And Lord, I ask that you tug on the hearts of anyone who doesn't know you yet. You know who's going to listen. It's the same as when you were leading your people out of uh, Egypt. You had said that Pharaoh's heart would be hardened. And it's the same with other people as well. You know whose hearts will harden and whose won't. We ask, Lord, that you have compassion on all people. And that you help us to have compassion on people. Help us to see what you see. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, so that we can see the need out there so we know who it is you want us to reach out to. Be with us all, Lord, through this coming week. We don't know what it's going to bring. We know the COVID numbers have been going up. 
And we want to do the right thing. We want to be obedient to those in authority. You tell us that we need to be. And you tell us that we need to pray for them as well. So we lift up all of our leaders, right from the municipalities to across the country and all countries, Lord. We ask that you give them all wisdom, give them wise leaders that will give them advice that is going to be helpful. We ask, Lord, that it's your glory that shines throughout this world. It's not mankind's. Because if mankind is in charge of it, then we're in big trouble. We just want you to be in control, Lord, and we want you to hear us. And we ask that as we cast off our will and take on yours, that you speak to us and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you, and may God be with you until we meet again. <laughs>